because we're doing this very important launch, as you know, um, uh, today. And in, in fact, Fiji has been very privileged. We are the first country where this uh, global launch of this report will be carried out first. So it's got what they call follow the sun. So Fiji is the first day in the world. So it will follow the sun all the way and goes all the way up to New York and then, of course, to, to, to California. I'd like to uh, begin by firstly extended our, uh, extending our deepest sympathies of the Fijian people to the people of Bahamas, who have been left uh, devastated in the wake of Cyclone uh, or Hurricane Durian. For over 24 hours, Durian blasted the islands of Bahamas with ferocious winds and torrential flooding, leveling homes and taking lives. In fact, at the last count, I think there are already about 35 people who have already died there. We Fijians can, of course, sympathize with the anguish of the Bahamian people, as few others can. In Category 5, Cyclone Winston descended upon our country back in 2016. We lost over 55 of our people and saw one-third of the value of our GDP wiped out overnight. Storms like Durian and Winston are new, and in fact are new reality for us. And the experts tell us these storms will only grow stronger in the years ahead. These worsening storms, the rising seas, the prolonged droughts and changing weather patterns are all a direct result of changing climate. Our Honorable Prime Minister's persistence and passion in addressing the root cause of this crisis, the harmful emissions pumped out into our atmosphere, has made Fiji a respected global leader for climate action. But even if we succeed in our campaign to limit global temperature rise, we know that climate impacts will become far worse before they ever begin to get better. The need to build our resilience to climate impacts grows more urgent by the day. For that very reason, Fiji has also emerged as a global champion for the cause of climate adaptation, spurring the world to put resources behind real solutions that adapt vulnerable communities to climate impacts. We are taking our fate into our own hands in Fiji, leading by example with legislation, financing solutions and scalable strategies to urgently adapt to our economy. In rebuilding from Cyclone Winston, we're meeting high standards of construction in our homes, schools and other infrastructure to make them climate resilient. In our homes, more than 260 communities have benefited from the Build Back Better training ensuring that the homes and the villages reconstructed are more resilient to severe weather. In our schools, we have raised the standards so that all new schools must be able to withstand wind speeds on par with those that struck, cyclone, that struck during Cyclone Winston. In our economy, we are enacting innovative, innovative measures to ensure that promoting climate resilience becomes embedded in daily government operations. In 2017, we enacted ECAL, a 10% levy on certain services and, and items. In two years, we have invested more than Fijian $250 million to ensure all Fijians have clean water, resilient roads, and safe, stable homes. Led by the Ministry of Waterways and Environment, we are moving away from building concrete-based infrastructure to nature-based infrastructure which is more effective at protecting our communities from climate-induced impacts such as increases in erosion, flooding and sea level rises. On the world stage, we're calling for greater access to finance for climate-vulnerable nations. And our growing reputation as a leader in that space is garnering global attention and acclaim. Recently, Fiji has been invited to join a major player in the adaptation arena the Global Commission on Adaptation. The GCA is being led by former Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, and is co-chaired by Bill Gates and Kristalina Georgiev, the CEO of the World Bank. The organization's core message is identical to what Fiji has experienced in recent years, that the impacts of climate change are growing increasingly severe each year, and that good adaptation is fundamental <laughs> to building an inclusive and sustainable economy. We're here today to support the launch of a new report from the GCA as part of a global Follow the Sun event. 
the report provides recommendations on how to unlock and accelerate adaptation in seven sectors, including agriculture, water, natural ecosystems, infrastructure, cities, finance, disaster risk management, and locally-led adaptation. All across the world, the 30 commissions of the GCA are holding events similar to this and sharing the same core message, that the impacts of climate change are upon us, that effective adaptation is integral to sustainable economic growth, and that transformational adaptation must begin now as part of a coordinated effort from the international community. Like so many other climate vulnerable communities, your village has had to adapt to new climate threats to your security. The erosion of your riverbank has poured flood water from the Wainimbuka River into your homes and community buildings. But thanks to an innovative nature-based solution, we're staving off these floodwaters and preserving your community's security. We've halted the erosion of your riverbank with 600 meters of vetiva grass or gatra. This grass is non-invasive. It removes water pollutants and promotes soil and water conservation. And we're looking to replicate this project success in 22 other villages along the Wainimbuka River. The success of this project has made Naveodovatu village a model for climate vulnerable communities across the world. And I look forward to planting some vetiva grass myself this afternoon to continue adding to a community's resilience. By highlighting your community's success today, we are going to help spur greater global commitments to the cause of climate adaptation. We will help garner more resources to protect more communities who urgently need to boost their resilience. And Fiji stands ready, to, alongside the GCA, to rally governments, businesses and development organizations to back innovative and scalable adaptation strategies that save lives today and spare our world from future suffering. So ladies and gentlemen, that is what we're here to do. And in fact, your village name is now being beamed across all over the world. You'll find that in Facebook, you'll come along in New York and various other places. So thank you very much for accommodating us this afternoon. We look forward to working together with you and indeed use your village as a role model for all the others along the Wainimbuka River. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs>